Welcome everybody to Let's Talk About It, oh, a podcast that gives the platform for real talk, real topics, real people, real conversations. You know, this is part three of my story. Uh, part two, I left off at my first day, you know, the whole courting session, you know, had to, you know, and, you know, had to discuss with my grandmother about not crying, uh, not showing emotion not showing weakness in front of females if any men uh looking uh watching this it's okay brothers of all shades and colors it's okay show your emotion it's okay we're some of us is brought up not to show emotion but it's okay to show emotion man now, i'm 52 years old it took me a while to get there but trust me it's okay let it out because you know us men go through so many mental health issues. So much, man. Seriously. Let it out, brothers. Let it out. If you meet someone that can't be understanding with it, no matter what, who you're into, men, women, whatever, let them go. You don't need them. So let's continue on here. You know, after that, you know, I'm in my junior year. Uh, messing around, working, uh, still trying to find myself, still trying to fit in. You know, I'm starting to hit my stride, you know, got a, got a job, make a little money, got a little clothes and stuff like that. And guess what? Still messing around school. I failed again. Had to go to summer school again. Again. Then I get into that whole tough love thing with my mom. You know, like, what is wrong with you? That's what she said to me. What's wrong with you? Like when you'll get your when you'll get your act together. Like, you know, you are so stupid. It's all hurt. You know, that's all I heard was stupid, stupid, stupid. Like you're stupid. You're not getting it. You know, that hurts after a while. But let me tell you a little background with my mom. You know, like, you know, she, how where she came up. You know, she grew up, you know, born in 51, you know, tough grandmother. Uh, you know, wasn't th that she was basically like the babysitter of her little sister, my aunt, because my grandmother was at the time just got divorced, came back to the states after being a military wife of my grandfather, getting her degree, her master's degree at Temple University in the sixties, uh, to be, the, to be a school teacher. You know, she was already she already had her degree already. You know, but she was a military wife having kids. So, but then she wanted to move on. So my mom was basically like the babysitter of it. And my mom was like, you know, she was just high yellow, high yellow. She got her genetics from my grandfather's uh, mom, which she was half white, half black. She was like high yellow too, almost near pale. My mom was high yellow. And so at that time in the sixties, I guess she wasn't black enough to be black. And why not to fit in with the white folks back then? You know, colored people, white folks. That was the terminology back then. So she was ostracized about a lot of things, about her skin color. And like, you know, she was always in the house. Only thing she did was go to school and take care of her little sister. Didn't go, wasn't allowed to go to parties, wasn't allowed to do anything. Hardly had any friends. So you can imagine what, what she went through back in the, this is back in the 60s, right? Think about that shit. Like, you know what I mean? Teenager in the 60s, oh man, it's crazy. All this segregation shit and all that shit like that back in the day. And this is in Philly. Like Philly in the 60s, man, was the worst. People talk about Boston. Philly was like ridiculous with racism, right? So, you know, so when it comes around, like, you no, know, so she finally graduated high school. I mean, you know, she went to West Catholic for girls in West Philly. You know, she got a little friend she finally made. And she goes to Sally, goes to college. You know, she goes to Rosemont College, an uh, all girls school in Pennsylvania. Uh, so imagine that, like she was stuck in the house. Now she went to college. Imagine that. You know what I mean? You want to bust out, go crazy. She went wild. You know, I mean, who knows what she did? You know what I mean, apparently she wild out too much and met my father. And guess what? She had me. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, you know, but she was drinking a lot. She, she did admit when she first got to college, she went to a lot of parties. She drunk, drunk a lot. Then, you know, she met my father. You know, he was going to Hereford College. It was the all 
boys school or whatever. It was segregated boys and girls schools back then. Uh, down south, brother. Uh, then she got pregnant with me. Now, I got four different sides to that story, but we'll get to that in another time. But at that time, he left. Uh, so came home to my grandmother. Grandma was like, what the hell's wrong with you? You're embarrassing me. You're embarrassing to yourself. That's what she, that's what grandma was on her about. So she dropped out of school, dropped out of college. Now, go figure. To the point where, as she's getting bigger, my grandmother made her wear trench coats to hide her pregnancy. Because back then, you know, it was it didn't look good for a female to be showing she's pregnant and she has no father, no father figures. It was hidden. Even the summertime, you know, before I was born, hidden. Big trench coat, big as hell, hot as hell, right? Hidden. Stuck in the house, hidden in the house. Went until I was born. I was supposed to have been born in July. Uh, I was born in August. Not only was I two weeks late, but I was two and a half weeks late. Then they tell me that, you know, they had to pull my ass out. I was chilling. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to. I didn't want to come out. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I already told the first episode, I was only born in nursery. <laughs> go figure that. <laughs> I mean, out, out of 14 of us or 13 of us, I was only born. Whatever. So then we get back to me. You know, I mean, well, I'm sorry. So it's then, so no, she was single mom, you know, go figure, you know, didn't have no life as a teenager. Then get, then finally go to college, then get pregnant. Okay. Now you got to take care of a baby. So you can imagine what how way that is. So now we're going back to me. You know, I failed junior high, had, had, had I mean, jump my junior year, had, had to go to summer school. She was always on me, man. About uh, no, her favorite phrase was stupid, which I hate to this day. This phrase, I hate that shit. So stupid. What's wrong with you? Whatever. So I finally, like you know, passed junior high. Finally. So then I think, like you know, we had to go down down to DC that summer. You know, passing my junior year for family reunion. Now, I met my other cousins, the other Jenkinses. I was like, wow, I got Jenkins cousins. I was the youngest one at the time. So I mean, all these new cousins and family members and aunts and uncles, guess what? They all went to college. You know, everybody, oh, what college you go to? I, I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm failing already. I mean, I barely just passed summer school. But in the Jenkins name back in the day, like it was coveted to go to college. You know, my grandfather was on me about that. You know, my grandfather, you know, when I went down to reunion, like he was a retired professor at Howard University, at the Howard University in political science. Uh, you know, he's like, yeah, I mean, so I was like, that's a lot to look up to, right? So you already got pressure on you. You meet new cousins. Your grandfather is, a, you know, a former professor at Howard University. Your grandmother is a school teacher. She has a bachelor's and master's. Oh my goodness, like that's a lot to live up to, right? But your mom, you know, she had to quit because you had me. Go figure it out. So then we get into my senior year. That was um interesting. Very, very interesting. You know, you know, I, I start to find myself, you know, got new clothes, new gear, you know, like I got. I guess into, you know, being popular or whatever, uh, you know, just acting me, I guess, or acting another version of me, like a, like a character, right. In a story. Right. Like, you know, I remember, right. Like, you know, going through like, you know, the whole basketball thing, you know, on a team uh, playing basketball, you know, uh, like, you know, having some gear. Cause if you had gear and gold chains and, and uh, the gold chain, the, the rope, uh, the rings and all like that, you start getting noticed by females. And I mean, you can be a good looking brother or whatever, but you got, you had to have the gold. You had to have the gear. If you had a car, man, you, you made, right? This is high senior in high school, right? This is inner city city. So not that many people had cars, except maybe you was a drug dealer or you was 
rich, but nobody was rich back then. So I started like, you know, like dating girls and, you know, having fun and stuff like that. You know, you know, it wasn't, you know, I had to step out a little bit. I was behind the eight ball. You know what I mean, had a little fun here and there, you know, dating people and whatever. Then I get into a situation where I was not doing good in school. Was not doing good at all. Uh, you know, my senior prom was coming up. Uh, I was like, damn, I don't got a date for this damn thing. And also they told me that you, I might not be able to go to my senior prom because I was failing in school. So I was like, shit, no, no, no. So, so they let me go to senior prom, got me a date, Toronto. You know, it was, it was okay time. It was okay. But then this, this is the hardest part, right? They told me I was not going to graduate. They told my mom that. I wasn't going to graduate high school. Like, oh, damn, what the hell am I do now? So I come home, come home from school. You know, give the, give the note. Well, she got a phone call from a teacher or some shit like that. Telling me, telling her that I wasn't going to graduate. So my mom sat me down. I'm thinking, okay, am I too old to get my ass whooped? I'm 17 years old now. I mean, what the hell? She told me something that now it breaks my heart. Probably broke my heart back then too. You're an embarrassment. Yep, you're an embarrassment. Like, what are you doing? Like, you're so stupid. I am tired of trying to bail you out of school and all like this. Like, you are an embarrassment. So, um, wow, <laughs> that shit just hit. That when your mom tell you that you're an embarrassment, that hurts, right? 17. Now I've already been ridiculed all my life. Teased. Uh, stuttering problem. Got a girl pregnant. Wasn't allowed to see her. My daughter. Uh, trying navigate myself through inner city violence drugs had to live up to many new cousins as all graduates a graduate's going to go to college everybody wants me to go to college then i come home and i gotta hear this shit that i'm not good enough that i'm an embarrassment who wants to hear that shit right you're stupid I heard I'm stupid since I was freaking, I don't know, elementary school. Like, that's all I fucking heard, right? That's all you heard. I hate that. I hate that phrase. So at that point, I went into my room, didn't cry, because I wasn't allowed to cry. I mean, it was all embedded in my brain from my grandmother. I was like, you know what? Forget this. Next day, I went to school, but talked to, talk to the teachers. I was like, look, what I got to do to graduate. So you got ace your, ace your exams. Okay. Study my ass off. Study. I did the whole George Bush thing, like memorizing everything. English, uh, math, I was studying. But I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I will admit, uh, yeah, I cheated for math to graduate because I suck at math. Terrible at fucking math. Yeah, I did. I cheated. English was the hardest one because I had a teacher, Mrs. Johnson, the worst teacher ever. She hated me. She's another one, not supportive. Like, you know, like I'm never going to mount anything. She said it's a whole year. I'm not going to mount anything. No. So backtrack. I'm hearing it from my mom at home. Then I'm hearing it from my teacher in school. Right. Trust me, a lot of us went through that. Tell me somebody that you didn't have, like some teacher was a dickhead, right? So I had to battle that shit. But I proved it wrong. I studied my ass off. I aced my English test, okay? Now, this is the issue. I got called into the principal's office. My mom came up. Ms. Johnson said I was I cheated. 
I ain't gonna lie, the math one, yeah, that was easy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I did it. I ain't gonna lie. You. But the English one, no, I didn't. I studied. I memorized everything. Everything, right? There's no way he did it. He don't have the capability. This, this is a teacher saying this to the principal, right? I'm there. He doesn't, he doesn't have the capability of doing that. He failed all year. He had to cheat, right? Take out the math thing. Okay, whatever. Let's talk about the English, right? That I put 100% effort into. Studied my ass off, right? Aced it, right? So my mom came up there. She said, do you think he cheated? Not saying that, no way, my son would ever cheat. Do you think he cheated? <laughs> I was like, I'm looking around like, what the, like, mom, I didn't cheat. But she didn't know about the math. But the English one, I, I put all effort into it, right? Prince was like, well, retest him. My mom agreed. <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay, okay, fine. Let's do it right now. So anyway, so we went upstairs. I took the test. Guess what? I did it right in front of her. Guess what happened? I got two points higher the second time. So, Ms. Johnson, right there. Okay? But I didn't do it for anybody else. I did it for me. Right? That was the first time I had to step out. I start stepping out and knowing who I was or coming to a different character, different world. Right? I did it for me. What my mom say? It's about time. You lucky. <laughs> You know, whatever. It is what it is. You know, whatever. You know. Um, anyway, so we get to graduation. I graduate. Uh, you know, it was a guy's graduation. You know, 578 kids graduated. It's great. You know, it's a, it's a large school. Overbrook was a large school. We had seven floors in Overbrook High School. You know, graduated. Then it comes down to school, college. My grandfather came to me. He's like, okay, I can get you to Howard University. I got ties. I was like, bam, okay. It's all right. So I went up there to visit. Right, this is actually right before graduation. I think, no, it's like right after graduation. You know what I mean? Went up there, like, you know, walked around the campus with somebody. He's like, yo, man, I'm taking this party. And they were doing some summer session shit. Whatever. Had a ball. I'm seeing the most hottest chicks in the world. Beautiful. Oh my God, man. All black school. Like, like this was way above the females in my neighborhood. Okay. Like this was like top level. <laughs> I mean, and I'm having a ball. I'm partying. I'm doing my little, whatever it was, a whole little kid and play shit, house party shit. Right. <laughs> I mean, remember the, the how house party kid and play stuff? I was all in it. I was loving it. Right. I'm in. I just want to go for that, right? So my grandfather says, no. The condition is, you have to live with me. I was like, I'm not doing that. You know, I, I guess I got to have my mom in me. Uh, I didn't want to be controlled or whatever. I want to do what I want to do. I'm finally coming to my own to do what I want to do, Okay. So I'm like, okay. I turned down. Then my grandma was like, go to temple. Turned down. Now, this is a time where I'm the only youngest Jenkins who didn't go to college. Everybody else went to college. My grandfather, my my he had a, a PhD in political science. My grandmother, master's degree, all my cousins had bachelor's degrees, everything. Not me. Didn't go. Okay. So I'm like, so I come back home, you know, I have to talk to my grandmom and all like that. My mom comes to me. She's like, uh, I'm going on a trip to Bahamas. I'm like, really? Okay, go well, have fun. Like, yeah, like, no, do you want to go? I'm like, cool. I'm thinking this is like graduation gift, right? Apparently, she already had a trip booked. The person couldn't go. So she took me, just not to waste a ticket. 
I believe it was a graduation gift, right? No, it wasn't. So anyway, I go to the Bahamas and I get down there and it's like a whole nother world down there. Leaving the country, yada, 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 whatever, right? You know, had my first underage legal drinking experience. Go to the bar. I'm expecting to get a soda. They serve me alcohol. I'm thinking I'm a 17 year old kid. Like, fuck it. Why not? Right. I'm drinking, 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 drinking. I forgot what I was drinking. I don't know what the hell it was. So this woman was right next to me. Uh, then she brought me a drink or two. An older woman, uh, older, older, older black lady. I think she's like 37. I'm 17. So it's like 20 year difference, all right? She's like, you know, you want to come to my room? I was like, oh, man. I was, like, was kind of experienced, but not really experienced. So, <laughs> uh, something I never shared before. Go up to the room. I'm scared as hell. I run. <laughs> Don't ask me why I just run. I was scared. I was 17. I didn't know what I was doing. But that was like the beginning of me stepping out of my shadow because I was so involved in this and all like that. I'm trying to learn myself, right? So then, like, you know, I, like my mom was like, you know, you got to get a job. So I got me a job. I'm working in an arcade. I'm working here. I'm working all these eyeball jobs, right? Then I meet someone I've never met before in my life. Like, you know, you only see him on TV at this time, okay? Or passing, whatever. First white girl experience. Never did get her name, Lisa, right? First white girl experience. Didn't know what to do, right? This was the time of the whole jungle fever era, right? Remember the movie Jungle Fever? And it was taboo. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it used to be black on black or white on white, Asian on Asian, Hispanic on Hispanic. First experience. So I didn't know what to do. I'm like, do I treat it the same or do I do it differently? Whatever. And at the same time, right, when the whole jungle fever shit came about, you know, that was whatever. So, you know, we go out and that was my first experience ever going out being stared at. It was crazy, mad crazy, mad crazy, right? And it was nuts. Like, I didn't know how to take it. So then, like, you know, so we was about to go into um, to another part of, part of it. You know, we decided to get intimate. I'm like, okay, I've never been with a white girl before, whatever. Man, this is where it gets interesting, right? I know you probably think, okay, so what? It comes out, all ready to go, I'm ready to go too. But then she had this little bottle, Right? Little bottle, what the hell is that shit? So she started putting on her little thing, little thing, sniff it up. Like it gets her high and excited. And she had a body. I was like, holy shit, like, man, like, whatever. So I'm standing, pitching the tent, I'm ready to go. So she puts it on my, my finger. It's like, she said, it would entice you, right? I come all the way up to my nose, right? If I want her, so bad. And I was like, and then I started thinking about my grandmother and everything else. Now dump it. She got mad, kicked me out. That was like the first experience of not doing drugs. It was right in front of my face. But the temptation of it all, like what I'm saying, like temptation was there. You know, you got this hot chick, banging body. Okay, I could have fell in the temptation, but I didn't. I went on with it. Okay. So going through the whole process of this and that. And, you know, getting into it with my mom. You know, then we had a big ass fight. Again, you know, telling me that I got to get my shit together. Do something. Then she tells me something. It was a bombshell. Right. I don't know why I even had you. <laughs> I don't know why I even had you. I was like, <laughs> wow. let it go. 
I just didn't, didn't talk to her. So then after that, you know, it gets really interesting. Now, I mean, I'm going to end it on this last story here. I was a bike messenger. Uh, going through the whole, you know, delivering paperwork and this and that to everybody. Coming down Art Street, if you're from Philly on Art Street, car comes out of parking garage, hits me, flip over, and I wake up in the hospital. Okay. They said I was comatose. I was out for two weeks. I didn't wake up for two weeks. Two weeks I was out. Woke up, didn't know, I didn't even know my name for like, I think like a day. And my mom and my mom came up. I didn't recognize her. But for some reason, my grandmother came up. Like, and I reckon, I didn't know who she was, but I, I recognized her, right? Then it started coming back to me after a day or two. It was crazy. Like that happened to me, you know? And I was like, what the fuck? Like, like comatose, think about that. Two weeks, I'm laying there, right? <laughs> and what's my mom say? <laughs> I guess I got to cancel that insurance policy now. Like it's a joke. Think about that. <laughs> Crazy, right? The type of shit I went through. You know, I know this episode was a little bit boring, you know, but it was a certain th things I had to get into to where next time I'm going to get into the 20s. That's the party area. That's the, that's the bad boy area. That's the uh, life lessons. I finally learned life lessons. Uh, join me for this ride. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, sticking with me through this journey. Uh, whoever is watching, I hope you got some out of it. No, it gets better. You know, I know it was kind of sad and stuff like that. Maybe boring somebody, but it's helping me get through it. Till next time, guys. Peace. Love you all. Keep on watching. Click and subscribe down the bottom. Check out for the next episodes coming out. Peace.